Welcome to my lecture online. A very interesting problem that can be done using angular momentum is to try to figure out the radius of the Bohr atom. The Bohr atom, of course, is the hydrogen atom, which consists of a single proton as the nucleus, where most of the mass is concentrated, and a single electron zip around the nucleus. It was found a long time ago, about 100 years ago, that the orbits of the electrons are quantized that they can only the electrons can only exist at very specific locations in orbit around the nucleus and so it all came down to try to figure out the radius of each of those orbits so they tried to figure out the radius of the nth orbit around the nucleus of a hydrogen atom what was known at the time is that the coulomb force would then control the velocity of the electron around the nucleus we knew that the Coulomb force would provide the centripetal force, which is equal to k times q1 q2 over r squared, and k is four, 1 over 4 pi epsilon sub naught, which is about 9 times 10 to the 9 newton meter square per Coulomb square, and q1 and q2 are the charges on the electrons and the protons. r would then be the distance from the nucleus to the orbit of the, of the electron. To make things simple, k, q, and q2 can be replaced by the constant a. It was also surmised that the angular momentum had to be quantized and that the angular momentum of each orbit or of the nth orbit would be the number n, which is an integer, times h over 2 pi, where h was Planck's constant, determined to be 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34. Sometimes we write h over 2 pi as h bar, so it would be n times h bar. So we knew that the angular momentum had to be quantized. So how, from this information, can we determine the radius of the orbit? Well, what we can do is write that the angular momentum is equal to i times omega. So L sub n is equal to, well, and we can write this as i would be m r squared and omega would be v over r so this can be written as m r times v so then for the nth orbit we can say that this is equal to m times r sub n times v so it all comes down to finding what r sub n is equal to and since we knew that the angular momentum had to be quantized n h over 2 pi we can then say that n h over 2 pi had to be equal to m r sub n times v, this is sub n, and then if we solve this for r sub n, we can say that r sub n had to be equal to n times h divided by 2 pi times the mass times the velocity of the electron. So this would then be the radius of the Bohr atom for the nth orbit. But of course, we didn't know what the velocity was. The velocity has to come from realizing Coulomb's law where we can say that the centripetal force must equal the Coulomb force, and the centripetal force would be mv squared over r, and the Coulomb force can be simplified to be a over r squared. Simplifying that, we can see that this r would cancel out that r, and we can, then we can write v squared, v squared to be equal to a over mr, or v can be written as the square root of a over mr. And then, of course, if we then replace this v by this quantity, we could then say that r sub n would be equal to nh divided by 2 pi m, and v would be the square root of a times the square root of mr in the numerator. So simply, since v is in the denominator, I could then write it as the product of the inverse. But notice that this is also r sub n, and I have an r sub n on both sides, so I need to square both sides. If I then square both sides, on the right side I have r sub n squared is equal to n squared h squared times m times r sub n divided by 2 squared, that would be 4, well, let me just square it right away, so I get rid of that. So the denominator square would be 4 pi squared m squared times a. And then realize I have an r sub n here, an r sub n squared, so that can be simplified. This and this cancel. So finally, I could then write that r sub n is equal to n squared h squared 
divided by 4 pi squared m times a, and that would then be the radius that they found for the Bohr atom. And notice that the radius for any orbit n, so n squared, n is an integer, h is the Planck's constant, 2 pi squared becomes 4 pi squared, m is the mass of the electron, and a would be k, q1, q2. All those things were known, and therefore they were able to establish the radius of the Bohr atom, understanding that the angle of momentum of the, of the electron would always be quantized according to this concept right here, nh over 2 pi, and that is how it was done.